So um, would you skip to where it says scalar notes? Scalar is a quantity that can be described with one number. Like if I'm going to describe my golf game, I shot a, what do you think I shot? 500? I'm not that bad. But uh, I maybe shot 120. <laughs> I'm not a very good golfer. But if, it's, if you can sum something up into a one number, that's a scalar quantity. Um, if you look at the weight of something, you know, 120 pounds. Uh, if you look at the um, uh, electricity output, you could say uh, 40 watts and things like that. Anything that comes out in one number, uh, so many coulombs, so many kilograms, so many seconds or so many minutes, so many degrees Fahrenheit, so many gallons. Anytime it's one number, it's called a scalar quantity. And we use scalar quantities a lot in math and in science. Uh, vectors. How many of you have seen uh, Despicable Me? What's a vector? It has magnitude and, there you go, magnitude and direction. And uh, I think I still have that. Vectors, the difference between them is that added quantity of direction. So if you're walking five miles, where are you going to? Are you going to Eden Prairie or are you going to uh, Victoria? Are you... Uh, if you're flying uh, for three hours, are you going to uh, uh, Winnipeg or are you going down to uh, Kansas City? It is The direction is important because it makes a difference in what quantity you're looking at. Force is the same thing. If I'm applying 10 pounds down, is different than across. Okay, and so that makes a difference. All right, so there you go. That's, that's pretty much the, the gist of it. Think of velocity as, or as vectors, as having two parts to it. And when we look at scalar, there's only one part to it. That's the best way to describe it. So that brings us all the way down to the assignment. Go down to day one. The following situations need to be described using an appropriate measure. Classify them as scalar or vector. So let's do the first one together. A classroom chair is moved from the front of the room to the back of the room. Is that a vector or a scalar quantity? Why is it a vector? Yeah, you're describing you're going from the back, front to back. That's a direction. And it's telling you how far, kind of indirectly, how far it is. So you have two things, you're, you're showing a direction and a uh, magnitude. So this is definitely a vector. You try two through eight. This is actually part of your assignment and you're gonna do all of these through eight. Uh, I do wanna do, tell you about number two though because I think you could argue this as a scalar or a vector because let's say uh, my bank account is $1,000. Is that a Scalar, or is that a vector quantity? Scalar, it's $1,000. How could it be a vector quantity? Changes, yeah? Yeah, I could owe 1000 <laughs> or I could be ahead 1000 Then it could be a vector quantity. So you could kind of argue that. Maybe I'm 1000 in debt. I need 1000 to to uh pay off all my bills this month, or I have a thousand to pay off my bills. That's very much a vector quantity. So I would say that one could be both. And you can you'd probably argue that on a few of those. So for anatomy of a vector, you uh, have three parts really. You have a starting point we call the tail, an ending point we call the head, and then how great it is depends on the what the body or the magnitude. And this definitely is the magnitude here. And where the tail is in relationship to the head, that helps you with your direction. And so you can have any direction you want with where that head is in reference to the um, tail. 
Now, the, the probably the most important part on this slide is the notation because it gets a little weird. Uh, we usually refer to a vector like this as AB because the tail is at A and the head is at B. And you can see that by this where the arrow is in this little symbol. So we'd write AB and usually put like a line with a little half arrow showing that the half arrow is on the head side of that vector. Uh, you could also skip that whole thing and just call this vector A. A. The whole thing is a small letter A with a half vector on it. Now this is not absolute value. We're used to it being absolute value. This means magnitude, how long this thing is. And we'll talk about calculating it and figuring it a little bit later. Equal vectors, in order to be equal vectors, they have to both have the same what? Yeah, they have to have the same direction. Isn't one direction a group? Yeah, okay. I'm kidding. And then the same magnitude. Apparently a jokey group. Okay. And then uh, to be negative vectors, these are so obvious, they're a little elusive to people. Are these negative vectors, these two, the red and the blue one? No, but if they're the same magnitude, what could you do to make them negative vectors? Put the head where the tail is. Yeah, this will be the opposite of A. So you have uh, opposite direction. That would be your... What do you mean? Like if you had the same direction, but not, or like, I don't know, can you have like a negative magnitude? Not really. Magnitudes are just an amount. Okay. That's a really good question, but I would say uh, you would just have the opposite direction. Uh, magnitude is magnitude. It's 15. Oh, it's, a, it's an absolute value of a, an amount, yeah. That's a great one. Now, the zero vector is a sum of two opposite vectors. But that's not true. It doesn't have to be opposite vectors. What it could be, sum of vectors with a result equal to zero. That means the head ends up at the tail. That's a zero vector. Not a super important thing. But equal vectors, that's kind of a big deal. And we're going to talk about those. So if you go to the next slide, state which vectors have the same magnitude. So for part A, can you tell me anything that has the same magnitude as vector A? What's that? Uh, G, good. Anything else? I think so. Anything else? Yeah, um, D, probably. Uh, anything else? I don't think U. Doesn't U look a little longer? But I think E and F are the same, aren't they? E and F have the same magnitude. Sound about right? Okay, uh, does C have anything equal or U have anything different, equal? No, I don't think so. Which have the same direction? Does A have the same direction as anything? Yeah, and so we'd say A and C have the same direction. Uh, does B have the same direction as anything? E, yep. Does uh, D have the same direction as anything? There should be one. F. Does G or U? No, I think that's it. C, 
are in the opposite direction. So let's do for C here. Are there any in opposite directions? Well, A and what? G and A and what? Or not A and G and what else? C, G and C. Anything else in opposite directions? Is that good? How about our equal? Okay, how about our equal here? Which ones are equal vectors? They're the same vectors in magnitude and direction. Do you see any? D and F, but F isn't in the same place as D, though. Doesn't matter, as long as it's the same magnitude and direction. So you go D and F. Anything else? There's, there's another pair. B and E, yep. Good. And I think that's it. Uh, our parallel, parallel, that's easy. A, C, G. Uh, looks like B and E are parallel. D and F are parallel. You can get the parallel ones. So there's equal vectors for you. Uh, let's take a look at addition of vectors. This is the last part. Uh, when we add vectors together, you have, what was this part again? Head, what was this part? Tail. So let's say you're walking from here to the lunchroom. Okay, so you go from here to the lunchroom. And then you decide, oh, I need to go to the restroom. So you go from the lunchroom to the restroom. Okay, so if you're describing your total distance that you went, you went from here to the restroom. This from here to here is what we call the resultant. So let's draw that on here. Let's add A plus B. Okay, so we're going to take A and we're going to add B. So if we add A plus B, the tail of B goes where the head is of these. So we add head to tail. And your answer is not that. That's not your answer. Your answer is just going to be from, and this is really annoying, but this is how you're going to remember it. You're going to go from the tail of the first to the head of the last. Would you say that with me? Say it really annoyingly like that. From the tail of the first to the head of the last. And so what happens is, is that this is what we call the answer or the resultant of A plus B. It is a vector. So you don't have just two added together. You got to make sure that they draw a, an answer that's a resultant. And this is from the tail of the first, which is A, to the head of the last, which was over here. And that's your result. Is that okay? Yeah. Good. So then all we have left is I'd like you to go ahead and see if you can add these. So if we took vector A, what you do first is you copy vector A. All of these are A plus B. You copy vector A, and then the tail goes right off of that, and then you copy vector B. And then your resultant is from where? Say it. The tail of the first to the head of the last. And that's your resultant. Ta-da! That's your answer. Go ahead and find those. Give you two minutes to find all those equals. I'll show you the answers to just two of them. Uh, let's just do uh, H here. You copy A. Put a little half arrow on it. And then you copy B, which is ta head to tail, copy B. And then your resultant is from the tail of the first to the head of the last. And that's going to be your resultant. Uh, which other one do you want to see? Oh, the, do you want to see B here real quick? Here's A. Here's B. And here's your resultant. From the tail of the first to the head of the last. There's your resultant. Good. 
So uh, once you have those, then you're going to be just ready to go zip into the assignment, which is at the end here. We did the uh, 10 and then, boy, this is really creating problems today. And then uh, you're going to do, um, we did that one, then do number five, read it and interpret it. Six, read it and interpret it. I'm not going to interpret it for you. Uh, number seven, I'm going to give you a little hint. Law of all signs. Law of all signs. Or law of signs, one of those two. And uh, that will help you with that. And uh, number eight, I'm going to let you come up with that. So uh, vectors, introducing vectors, drawing vectors, adding vectors head to tail, and finding resultants is what we did today.